After a world circumnavigation, plus the stress of the global pandemic, David and I wanted to take it slow. We'd been on the move for five years, constantly sailing west and exploring new destinations. Some of it, especially in the last two years of the circumnavigation, was really challenging. So, what did we want to do next? We wanted to keep it more relaxed, and that's why we went to the Bahamas. I'm Amy from Out Chasing Stars, and I invite you to sit back, relax, and let's talk boats. The 2021 and 2022 cruising seasons on Starry Horizons was spent in the Bahamas. This wasn't our first time in the island nation. I'd been several times with my dad and David and I had spent three weeks in the Bahamas in 2015, cruising from Bimini to Marsh Harbor. This season though, was an entirely different experience. We arrived in Georgetown December 19th and left from Spanish Wells May 17th. That's nearly five months spent in the islands traveling a minuscule 670 nautical miles. We were mostly based in Georgetown Exumas, taking trips out to Conception Island, Long Island, Ragged Islands, and then wandering up the Exuma chain and hopping up to Spanish Wells to end our visit. I've got links to blog posts about each stop down below where you can see some of the amazing pictures we took this season. Based on all that time, we have 10 thoughts to share with you today. Whether you are out cruising, planning to go cruising, or maybe just hoping to visit the Bahamas someday. This is why we chose to go to the Bahamas. It's easy. It's well charted, food is readily available, anchoring is in shallow sand, and there is a ton to do. The tides are small and the anchorages are well protected. You can explore the 700 islands while only clearing in one time. All of that makes it pretty simple compared to most places we've been. We've literally been around the world and from above the surface of the water, the Bahamas is one of the most beautiful places we've been to. The water is neon blue and crystal clear. Many mornings, especially when the weather was calm, we would sit on the back step and stare at the sand beneath us as though we were looking through a pane of glass. The only other place that we feel compares is the Maldives, where the water is also beautiful, vibrant tones, and some of the best water clarity we've ever seen. The Bahamas in winter is generally warm, but the water was colder than we thought it would be, and we wore wetsuits if we wanted to be in the water for a while. When northerlies rolled through, they brought cooler temperatures. Sure, it wasn't cold, but for people who've been sailing along the equator and come from Houston, the weather was pretty chilly. It was also a lot windier than we thought it would be. There were days on end where it was blowing 20 knots out of the east. But circling back to cruising the Bahamas being easy, there were plenty of anchorages we enjoyed with excellent holding and good easterly protection. And when westerlies blew in, we always had a place staked out. Since the Bahamas is so close to the US and so easy to cruise, there are all levels of cruisers in the islands. We met a ton of boats who were brand new, spending their first season testing things out, we also caught up with friends of ours who had circumnavigated with us and met people who'd been coming to the Bahamas time and time again for over a decade. This means that there will always be someone in the anchorage who has problems. Anchors dragging or dinghies getting lost. It also means that there are plenty of interesting people to talk to, especially if you're trying to learn to cruise or are new to the area. If there's one think, thing we think cruisers headed to the Bahamas should buy, it's the Explorer charts. We bought the paper versions, but also the Aquamaps version too, and downloaded charts on our phones and tablets. There are links below to both versions. The charts are more accurate than our Raymarine charts, which is important because the Bahamas is generally pretty shallow. We could share waypoints and tracks with other cruisers 
and the handy magenta lines help you chart your course. That being said, the information in the Explorer charts is not the end all be all. They are made for cruising boats following specific paths with certain drafts. We forged our own path sometimes because we kind of thought that with our depth, we would be okay. And we were. We're pretty pleased we made it through an entire season in the Bahamas without touching bottom. It may have been close once or twice. David and I are running businesses from the boat now, and access to the internet is something we pretty much require. Aside from Conception Island and a few of the northern islands in the Ragged's, we were able to get internet service when we needed it. Granted, in the busiest of times, Georgetown's cellular service was clearly overwhelmed, but a little bit of patience, and it worked out. Let's move on to some things about the Bahamas that aren't so great. The first thing I worry about is overfishing. We've talked to tons of people, locals and cruisers, who told us about what the fishing stock was like back in the day. They talked about climate change and about foreign fishing vessels coming in and wiping out the stock. What we witnessed was piles of dead conch shells, even in the most remote islands. The shallow reefs of the Bahamas are missing some of the bigger fish, especially parrotfish, that keeps reefs healthy. In terms of underwater life, the Bahamas were a little lackluster when you compare it to some of the other places we've been, like the South Pacific. That being said, plenty of cruisers fish frequently or harvest conchs or lobsters. I'm just basing my observations on what I saw while snorkeling. We were in pretty remote parts of the Bahamas. Georgetown is not a cruise ship port and it doesn't have many big resorts or that many hotels. These are issues on other parts of the Bahamas we've been to like Nassau or Marsh Harbor. But Georgetown does have a massive number of cruisers in the peak season, over 400 boats. This is not a place where you can come to be alone and enjoy the quiet. It's beach parties and VHF drama, and sometimes locals complaining about misbehaving cruisers. The worst part of the Bahamas was undoubtedly the trash. All of the windward beaches had tons and tons of trash on them. This isn't cruisers or locals dropping stuff. This is massive amounts of trash being washed in from the sea. This is ending on a high note. While we spent five months there, we barely made a dent in the 700 islands of the Bahamas, which is why we're sailing back. We look forward to adventuring along these beautiful islands for another full season. That's the 10 thoughts we have on cruising the Bahamas, and I hope you learned something or found the information useful. David and I will see you in another day, another bay.